I'm ranking the top 10 most common functions in a fun and hopefully informative tier list. Our first function is the linear function y equals x. Some people might call this function boring, but I like how predictable it is. y is equal to x. How much easier could the calculations be? All linear functions have a constant rate of change, which means the slope is the same between any pair of points. It's really easy to graph. Just use your slope, which is rise over run, to plot your points. And that's probably the one thing that mostly everyone remembers from high school math. There are lots of easy and useful applications, such as calculating income from hourly wages, doing temperature conversions, or using the distance formula, where distance is equal to speed times time. This is definitely an A tier function. Next up, we have the quadratic function y equals x squared. The graph of this forms a cool shape called a parabola. It's symmetrical, which is nice, and it has an absolute max or min called a vertex. There are lots of applications that involve quadratic relationships, including projectile motion and revenue optimization. And who doesn't like to optimize revenue or model how gravity affects a projectile's motion? This function also goes in A tier. Next up, we've got the square root function, y equals the square root of x. This function has a restricted domain, and it only lives in one quadrant. But the graph kind of looks like the square root symbol itself, so that's kind of neat. If you try and make x negative, you get an imaginary number, which sounds interesting, but it's pretty complex. Square roots do show up in lots of formulas in trigonometry, statistics, and physics. Some places where you will find the square root function are the distance formula, the quadratic formula, standard deviation formula, and the formula for the period of simple harmonic motion. Even though this function has lots of interesting applications, why do we so often only consider the positive or principal square root? What about the negative square root of a number? For that reason, let's put this function in C tier. Next up, we have the absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x. This function is never negative, which sounds like a good thing, but that has to be exhausting making everything that is negative turn into a positive. Sounds kind of fake to me. F tier. Next up, we have the sine function, y equals sine x. This function does have a range that's restricted to being between negative one and one, but one cool thing is that there's an infinite number of solutions for x that have a y value that's between negative one and one. Also, connections to the unit circle help open up the world of trigonometry. There's tons of applications with any periodic relationship, like tidal patterns, vibrations, temperature, amount of sunlight, sound waves, and simple harmonic motion and voltage. Without trig functions, there wouldn't be trig identities, which are always fun to try and prove. This function has to go S tier. Next up, we have the rational function y equals 1 over x. Any function with asymptotes is interesting. Are we sure it just approaches those lines more and more closely? It must get there eventually, right? Haven't you heard of Achilles and the tortoise? This function makes you actually think about the idea of a limit and infinity, which are both very important ideas in math. B tier. Next up, the exponential function y equals 2 to the power of x. Would you rather get $1,000 every day for a month? Or... Get one cent on day one, two cents on day two, four cents on day three, eight cents on day four, and it keeps doubling until the end of the month. Think about that, and you'll understand the power of exponential growth. There are many interesting applications that involve exponential functions, such as radioactive decay, compound interest, half life, and population growth. The rate of increase in an exponential growth relationship can be amazing. When looking at how many times you would have to fold a piece of paper for it to be thick enough to reach the moon, or financial applications. But the rate of increase of exponential growth can be pretty terrifying when looking at the spread of disease. For that reason, this function goes in B tier. Next up, we have the log function, y equals log of x. Log functions can be used to analyze values that have a massive range of magnitudes. By taking the logarithm of a data set, it compresses its range and makes it easier to analyze. This is done with the Richter scale, sound intensities, and also pH levels. There's a couple special logarithms you have to know about, the common logarithm and the natural logarithm. 
And you should know that logarithms are the inverse of exponential functions. Since exponential functions were in B tier, the inverse of B tier, uh, I guess that would have to be C tier. So let's throw log x in C tier. Next up, we have the cubic function y equals x cubed. When graphing this function, I always find it hard to get the curve just right. But it does have rotational symmetry, which is kind of neat. But finding cool applications of this function is a bit of a stretch. Maybe Bezier curves for computer animated drawings? I don't know. F tier. Next up, we've got the constant function y equals 3. This is the most reliable function. For every input you give, it gives the exact same output. It never changes. Its rate of change, or its slope, is 0. It's the easiest function to differentiate. It's very predictable. The range is just a singleton set. The only downside of this function I can think of is that you need a ruler to graph it. But still, this function goes S tier. Let me know down in the comments any functions I missed and what tier you would put them in. Jensen Moon!